Just to hear you every day driving home from work just educates me. Life is great, and it's all because I followed your rules. To me, you are like a second father. Hey, Professor, this is this is better than my uh, high school sex ed class. I, I know it is. Tom, you are the closest thing to God we'll ever see. <laughs> ah, ah. As long as you're out there with your show, Tom, I know that um, freedom of speech is I'm still alive out there. And you're just dropping it like it's hot on everybody out there in the United States and above. You know, the good thing about your show is that, yeah, I'm listening. Hypocritical, maybe. Do I like you? Not at all. But I'm sure a million people love you right now and are up in arms just cheering for you because you're such a great guy bashing this poor little 17-year-old girl. Who cares Slut. if she's a person because she's tart. a party? A little tart. A little pregnant tart is what she's hey, a pop tart. You... We're going to give you a chance. Uh, we're going to try you out now as a reporter. Are you ready, Alfredo? I'm ready. Okay, hang on. Here it is. And now, the news. Here's Alfredo. Yes. Um, hi, this is Alfredo. Um, we have the latest news of regarding uh, the vice president. Um, we found out that she has a 17-year-old daughter that is pregnant and she's unmarried. And uh, the vice president is um, is complaining about uh, all these people having these uh, unmarried sons having children, and she is not in favor of abortion. Uh, there is going to be uh, as a consequence of these problems. There is going to be a, a lot of unhappy. People. You know what, you know what, Alfredo? I'm impressed. I'm sending this tape right off to Channel 13 immediately. I used to date this crazy chick, and the only reason I was with her is because crazy chicks are great in bed. Yes. I mean, great I can't in believe bed. how great it was. If they don't cut your penis off with a butcher knife, they are fantastic. This is Rain on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, I've heard your uh, opinion on girlfriends and stuff like that. What is it again? Like, I got an 18-year-old girlfriend. By the way, do you use condoms? Yeah. 100% of the time? No. Right. I know you said So you know what's coming. You stuff. know what's coming. Rain Jr. We'll call him Drizzle. Is it typical to be seeing one girl and then seeing another girl within the same couple days? <laughs> are you kidding? I'm a double shifter. I've done two in one day. Wow. Times are changing. Darling, they've been changing for a long time, and this has been going on since before you were born. I just, some people are just raised in a bubble, you know what I mean? And then they are finally exposed to what it's really like. Right. And it's kind of shocking as all. Well. I'd be happy to expose you to what it's really like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just for, for, the, uh, for the boys out there. Hello, are you there? No, I left the room. No, I'm sorry. Did I'm you need to say, uh-huh, every three seconds? All right, here we go. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting crappy. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I uh-huh. Anyway, just want uh-huh. like to uh, mention to the boys out there. Right. Uh, hello? Uh-huh. See, you know I'm still here because I'm saying uh-huh. There he goes. Hey, Tom, it's the first time I ever called. Yeah. Tell me something I don't know. From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's the Tom Likas Show. That's part of my day. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 
866. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. Call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Kevin on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Okay, I disagree with your point of view on Barack Obama and his being the P-word. Yep. Pussy. Right. Or a pansy, as it were. Yeah, I think you're being reactionary. I don't think this guy's been in this game this long to let this little girl take it away. What I think he's going to do is he's going to hopefully the media destroy this girl and she just has to get out of the campaign. And if that doesn't work... And if he needs to, he will destroy this girl. I think he's just playing it cool right now because, you know, he has Hillary's people that he needs to on board, and, and just he just doesn't want to rock the boat right now. So I think he's Well, but that's what back. every losing Democratic candidate has done in the last 20 years. Yeah, but I don't think this guy's afraid. I mean, he took on Hillary and her punches, and he, he fought back. I don't really think he's afraid of this girl. He I mean, didn't. he's already shown he'll do what he has to do to win. I think it's just all game personally well i'm sure he thinks this is the game that will win but i disagree when a woman who preaches abstinence in schools abstinence only education a woman who is opposed to sex education in right. school when her 17 year old daughter becomes pregnant that's relevant right but don't forget she just stepped in this came campaign last week i, I just believe barack is going to jump this lady when it's time to I think he's just going to lay back and see what happens. She's already taken shots at him uh, in her speech at the Republican convention on Wednesday night. Right. Everyone said what a great speech it was, and he said nothing in response. Yeah, but I'm going to give the guy a little credit. He's made this far in, by, by making wise decisions, I, and I do agree with what you're saying. He's going to have to jump on his lady. I just think he's going to give it a little time. That's That's well, all I'm saying. I think he is going to give it a little time, but... Uh, there's such a thing as waiting too long to do something. By the right. way, understand understand where, where I'm coming from. I'm voting for Barack Obama. <laughs> right. So understand, I, I want him to win. But part of wanting him to win is wanting him to know how to win. And uh, He's not alone. Uh, Michael Dukakis was a pussy and did not speak out and allowed himself to be uh, assassinated by the uh, by the tactics of Republicans. So did Al Gore. And so right. did John Kerry. So it's a trait of Democrats. The only one who got in the mud and wrestled with them is the one who won, Bill Clinton. Well, hopefully he will wrestle with this guy, and I think he will. I just think you all just need to be a little more patient. I just don't see any fear in this guy. I, I don't. We will see. Okay. But thanks, I, I hope. I look, Kevin. I hope you're right. Okay, I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Sam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Padre. Yes. So, uh, can you, uh, well, actually, I love your show. I have to say that first. But I love you the most on Saturday, I have to say. Oh, you, mean anyway. my wine, you mean my wine show? Love it. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's on different days in different cities. Uh, you're calling from Portland. Uh, in ah, L.A., it's on a... It, you hear it the day before everyone in L.A. hears it, which is on uh, Sunday. Yeah, suckers. <laughs> so that's cool. Okay, but what I called was uh, to see if you could re-inform the class about how much it costs to raise a baby from birth to 18, because you said that before, I think. On a, there was a study done. I have. Well, no, no, in today's dollars, and of course we okay. know what the dollar is worth year to year. But in today's dollars, uh, the number I've seen is between two hundred and twenty-five thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Whoa! So that needs to be said a lot more often, I think, in your show. So, for thirty seconds of ejaculation without a condom, is it really worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? That's the cost of my house I just bought. Yeah. So that needs to be said a lot more because if people realize that on a daily basis, they'd be much more likely to, you know. Use their head instead of their head. No doubt. So that's good. I just wanted to get that number again because I heard you before, but I couldn't remember the number. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, a quarter million. How much? Quarter million. How much? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Dollars, American dollars. To get laid. Uh, to get laid without a condom, yeah. Wow, that's that's horrendous. 
There you go. I, I think we got the message out there. Let's go to Sal on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. How you doing, son? And hey, no, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing okay. Now, how you doing? I <laughs> know. How are you doing? Nah, the wise guy over here. What's going on? Hey. Not much, Sal. <laughs> Love you, Dad. Uh, let's talk some baseball real quick. Uh, okay. The Dodgers are hosting the Diamondbacks this next three games. Uh, you know, I know they're not looking great, but they are at 500. They are at, what is it, 10th place uh, in the wild card? 6th place, excuse me? Look, uh, I think if the fans can back them up, they can definitely succeed. Uh, in these no, you know what? The Dodgers, the Dodgers have had more fan support than they deserve over the last twenty years. There's just no doubt about it. Now, I'm a Dodger fan. Let me just say that. Right on. But but the Dodgers have not nearly given back to the crowd as much as we've given to the Dodgers, okay. and and even this year. I mean, this is a race to see who's the least bad team in the National League worst. And and Arizona's bad, and the Dodgers, most of the season, have been just slightly worse. It hurts. And it whatever hurts. team, by the way, it, it, by the way. Them. It's like, a, it's like a, uh, that girlfriend that you have that you love so much, but she doesn't give you everything she's supposed to give you, and you just stick with it, and ooh, but you just can't leave her, and... I don't know that story personally, but I've heard it, you know, a couple times. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and by the way, it has to do with how smartly your team is run. I mean, you know, the uh, Angels signed Torrey Hunter, the mm. Dodgers signed Andrew Jones. Who knows what they're doing? <laughs> Get their heads out of their butts, right? <laughs> well, that's what uh, I'm Lord, thinking. I mean, you know, I mean, again, I'm a Dodger fan. It kills me uh, that the Dodgers have not been better the last twenty years. Uh, it kills me, but. The truth has to be told. Even if they win this lousy division, where are they going to go at the uh, in the postseason? Well, yeah, the early vacation, I guess. Well, uh, there's no doubt about it. Are they better than the Philadelphia Phillies or the New York Mets? No. No. I mean, are they better than the Cubs have been this year? No. Are they better than the Milwaukee Brewers? No. It sucks, but... Uh... It's one of those you hope lightning strikes, you know, in Los Angeles. Well, one. you hope you're going to win Lotto this weekend, okay? But the reality is the likelihood you're going to win Lotto is only uh, slightly worse than the odds the Dodgers will go to the World Series. Well, I can still stand behind them either way. And it's funny you say the whole Lotto thing because um, uh, I'm actually a, a lottery winner myself. Not literally the, <laughs> the whole money thing with the state of California. I mean, actually, uh, uh, I knocked up a girl. And then she, uh, that's a different story. I, I, I don't want to bore you with that. I'm sorry. You get back to the Dodgers. <laughs> that wasn't the state lottery, I take it. Well, okay, well, okay. I had a booty call and things were great. And then one night, uh, I always wore a con 100% of the time. Can't even ask me otherwise. Uh, I guess something slipped out. Uh, I, I tried everything. I tried the Hail Mary. I tried... Uh, telling her that uh, my genetics are horrible, that there's a great chance she'll end up like uh, Sarah Palin's daughter or kid, uh, and that didn't work. She kept. Uh, she didn't. She didn't ask me for a dollar, a dime, nothing. Uh, but I was, you know, scared that she would one day or try to take something from me or want me to be there. Then uh, she met a dude in the Marines. A great guy. He's a better guy than me because he married her and adopted her, and now that's not my kid anymore legally. So I'm a lottery winner. <laughs> you are a lottery winner. Very nice. I thought you were going to tell me you took her to the hot tub and gave her some champagne to celebrate. I can't afford a hotel with a hot tub. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's a lot cheaper than child support, but I wouldn't recommend well, under any circumstances taking a pregnant woman into a jacuzzi because that could cause a spontaneous uh, miscarriage. First of all, that would not be right, Dad. It would be wrong. It would be wrong, Dad. Come yes. on. And <laughs> drinking alcohol while you're pregnant also. Terrible. Uh, who, who, who would make such a suggestion? Not my dad. Not me. I'll tell you right now. Not me. No, no, no. I love you, Dad. That's number one. 
Dad, uh, I've been listening for many, many years, and I don't mean I, I don't mean like these other clowns that call in and say I've been listening and then do the other thing. They think they still think they're better than you. No, 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 no. You did the show maybe a week ago, talk, you know, and you had all these successful people calling. I needed that more than any other show you've ever done. I needed it. You have no idea the light of fire that's been lit under my ass. I am on my game right now. I am gonna succeed. More than I even dreamt of imagined because I needed to hear those people. When I was listening to that show, I was I was driving by Santa Monica and Beverly Hills and I was looking at these beautiful homes. I was looking at these old people driving these brand new expensive cars with hotter with hot wives. I'm not making that up. I'm not just saying that that is a fact. I was seeing these things and I started crying because I'm not even a tenth of that. I am I am close to unemployment and I don't want to be that. I deserve better than that because I am an American American born. I was I'm 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 a I'm a child of an of an immigrant family. They came to this country for me to become something and I'm nothing. I should be something and I'm going to be something. I don't have any weight under on me to to slow me down. The only the worst enemy I have is myself and I'm not going to be that anymore. Dad, I love you and I thank you for helping me realize that I should be better than what I am right now. Son, I am so proud of you and you're going to do great. Just stay on that path, and I'm, I'm rooting for Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My curriculum vitae is as follows. I'm a cunning linguist and a master debater. I'm also uh, I'm an amateur gynecologist. I've got Russian hands and Roman fingers. And on top of that, I also am the one and only state board-certified interpreter who can interpret women into English. Oh, okay. It's the Tom Likas Show. Telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. We continue with your telephone calls about absolutely anything. And say hello here to Hector on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Hector? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Thanks, Dad, for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Certainly. Um, I have a little bit of an advanced question. And that is, um, I've taken your advice over the years, and I've taken really, really good care of my money. Um, I started reading financial books, and they basically centered around buying assets. And I've done that um, to the tune of since the 1st of January, I've saved around $10,000. My question is, at what asset level would you recommend a guy like me who's 32 to incorporate to protect my assets? Keep in mind, I'm not an accountant or an attorney. Well, sir, you and my first years. my first recommendation to you uh-huh. is that if you really want to ask that question and get an informed answer, that's where you need to go. I'm going to sure. give you my my lay answer, my uninformed answer, okay, based on what I know. Sure, because I've I had call. because I've had this question with my own accountant okay. about incorporating. Sure, and um, what people don't figure on when they talk about incorporating is for whatever they think they're going to save in taxes, there are corporate taxes you must pay. Now, I don't know at what level you pay them. Okay. What? I pay them at a fairly low level. I'm not uh, I'm not maxed out. I'm not in a high tax bracket. Right. Um, I just, I've been taking really good care of my money. Um, I don't chase a lot of skirt. I don't spend a lot of money on women. So a lot of my money that, you know, used to go to that and go to alcohol now goes into buying assets. Just right. stop. And yes. so, and I know I've read books, and um, it, they just never really talk about it. At what level it's a good idea for an individual like myself to to do that? Yeah. Well, I think when you're in the highest tax brackets okay. is when that becomes relevant. The uh, other time it becomes relevant is if you have a wife. Okay, I don't have that. Okay. <laughs> so now again, if you really, you know, if you need more information of that kind, my recommendation is that you see. An accountant or an attorney as soon as possible, sure. So that you can get that answer once and for all. But most people think that's very expensive, but really you're talking about asking one question. Uh huh. You might get billed for a tenth of an hour or or a quarter hour. I guess that's true. 
Um, but it's just, you know what I'm saying, when there's people that might be after you or, or this and that, you know, it's just always a good idea to protect your assets and, and right. basically not give them up. And that's, you've had the experience of time. I know you're a seasoned investor, um, so that was just coming. I mean, the home. best way to protect your money is to put it in a safe place. Oh, it's in the, yeah, sure, it's in a safe place. Where, where do you um, keep $10,000? In my brokerage account, in my cash yeah. brokerage account. And what is the, do you know, because the brokerages are very good at hiding this information, do you know how much interest you're getting on that? Um, well, it's actually just, it's it's the, um, yeah, my own personal realized gains. Yes, I, I mean, I'm up I'm up to about 5%. I mean, is, uh, is it invested or is it uh, no, no, sitting there in no, a cash account? No, 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 I, I invest it. I'm an active investor. Um, okay. I'm in front, yeah, I'm in front of my screens, um, and this is what I basically So you're a day doing. trader. Yes, I am, sir, yes. You are aware the vast majority of day traders lose their shirts. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I'm not a day trader from day to day. I'm a day, I'm, I'm more of an investor. I look at, when I make an investment, I like to think about, you know, time frames that are six months. Uh, an investment has to make sense for the long term. Um, I try not to pay too much attention to daily fluctuations because, Every investment. Yeah, but six months in the world of investing is still a very short-term period. Sure, you're absolutely right. Um, but, you know, just over time, the stock market tends to pay well. Um, they're just It's a safe place to put it over time. Um, you know, and obviously this market for this year has been a little bit different. Um, where would it's you been horrible. Recommend? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm still beating the street, but where would you recommend a guy like me put my money so it can grow and... Well, you know, there's very few places you can put your money where it's guaranteed to grow, and you really have to be on top of it. Sure. When you have $10,000, it's very hard to uh, uh, diversify uh, your investments. Sure, sure. So really what you want to do with that is I think you want to start a uh, and like a mutual fund account with the okay. minimum required. Okay. And then do what's called dollar cost averaging into, sure. say, an S&P 500 index fund. Sure. Because when this economic hard time begins to thaw out, uh -huh. uh, the big caps, uh, the safety stocks, sure. uh, and uh, th those are the ones I think that are pretty much guaranteed to start going up at that time. And if you dollar cost average, it reduces your risk because if you put the same amount in every month, mm -hmm. if the market continues to tank, you get more shares as the price goes down. Sure. You buy less shares as the price goes up. And so you protect yourself on the bottom end. You take a little off the top end. You might not make as much if things go well uh -huh. as if you put the money in all at one time, but you lose less if it continues to go down. Sure, sure. And I understand that. And I just, and it's, it's actually not a bad dilemma for me to have. You know, it's better than being up to my eyeballs in debt with a house I can't afford. Right. That wife. So, I mean, in the reality, you know, this is kind of the infancy. No doubt about Look, if you are debt-free, plus you're worrying about your $10,000, you're in a very good position for starters. Sure. And I, I don't have the least bit of a critique of that. That's that's a good place to be. Don't make any risky investments. Don't put that $10,000 all in one place. Just don't no. do it. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do something like that. But uh, Cool. Yeah, and well, like, hey, thanks for educating us. Uh, it's definitely appreciated. Um, there's a lot of guys in the media who just suck. I mean, you're one of the few guys I respect. Your uh, your advice is always top notch. And uh, thank you for that. You. And, I appreciate uh, the call. All right, can you take me out with a bong rip, please? I certainly can. Here you go. It's Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. How are you today? Doing okay, son. Great, great. Okay, so I wanted to uh, speak with you a little bit about um, Sarah Palin. Now, I personally don't really follow up on your political beliefs or, you know, you know anything like that. But when you talk about, obviously, her 17-year-old daughter getting knocked up, um, you know, unmarried and stuff, yeah, that does quote unquote cause a legitimate concern about someone who is It doesn't quote unquote cause a legitimate concern. It is a legitimate concern because Sarah Palin refuses to allow anything but uh uh abstinence to be taught in Alaska public schools. I understand, I understand And and her daughter is what you get when you teach abstinence. I understand now and I I'm used to the personal question and all, but um if if you're leaning more towards voting for Barack Obama, which 
in essence, it might sound like you are based on what I've been listening to. Um, I mean, we could we could talk about experience. She has more experience than Barack Obama does. No, no, she doesn't because she's never been a United States senator ever. She's never been a congresswoman. Uh, she's never had any national job at, at at a national level ever. So, so a community organizer, which Barack Obama is, which no, Barack I, Obama I, is a United States senator. Correct, but before he was a United States We're senator. not talking about that. Barack Obama is a United States senator, and he has been. I understand. Now, do you know for how many court days he's been in the U.S. Senate? Do you know how many days? It That's doesn't terrible. matter. One day would be one day more than Sarah Palin has. Uh, I, I, Tom, she's been, she was the head of the PTA. Then she moved to the mayor. Head of the PTA? Are you telling me the head of the PTA is more important than being a community organizer? I mean, do you hear how, how how bizarre this conversation is? Okay, okay. She was the head of the PTA. Well, obviously, in discussing politics, it all depends on how you, your what your lifestyle is, and you know if you own businesses, small businesses like I do. I own a very small repossession agency um, here in Los Angeles. A small what agency? It's a, it's a repossession agency. Oh, very nice. Uh, yeah. So. I mean, when you look at... The well, I know if McCain gets elected, you're going to have a lot of business coming your way. Well, no doubt, and that's what I'm talking about. And I don't mean to sit here and debate with you. I wanted to have more of a discussion on what you believe, you know, is, is more beneficial for the country. Um, as far as, you know, I, I looked at some stats today um, online, and <clears throat> they were saying, well, the statistics were saying that, you know, obviously when Barack Obama gets into office, he wants to raise taxes. And for yourself, who says, why should you have to pay for someone knocking up their kids, you know, and, and getting married and doing all this I'm stuff? I'm not talking about pay. By the way, when the taxes are raised, you know what that's going to pay for? The war in Iraq. Because we have gone into debt. We have gone into debt to pay for that war. It's also it's also going to pay for unified health benefits for illegal aliens. And I, I, There's I want... no... Yeah, by the way, that's what... Even if that's what Barack Obama says he wants to do, and just the way Bill and Hillary Clinton said they wanted to have national health insurance, they can't do it without the cooperation of Congress. And just like Bill and Hillary Clinton didn't get the cooperation of Congress, Barack Obama won't either. It doesn't matter whether he's in favor of that. He's not going to get it. Yeah, but that's what he's voting. I mean, if what? As, far, as far as I know, the man that is running for candidate or is running for president, the presidential candidate Barack Obama, he's telling me in his speeches and what he's coming out and saying is that he wants to raise the taxes on small business owners. He's going to raise increase by almost double the taxes, Tom. He's going to almost double taxes. Now, my family, my father, who started the business that I work this in, this country I, is broke. Broke. But, broke. I, but it, our country is based on a capitalistic society, Tom. It's about the work. country is broke. Of course, the country is broke. But does that mean that I have to suffer because of the the action? We of all have to suffer because your party and your president have spent like drunken sailors for eight years. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait, wait. My president, I personally do not support all of George Bush's actions. And well, you know, you know who did? John McCain. Well. Uh, He's from the same Republican Party, Tom. No, 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 no. He he supported uh, George Bush ninety to ninety five percent of the time. Okay. That's now, a fact. Okay, and if Senator Obama wants to come in and create change, well, what change is that? He hasn't really made it clear. As far as I'm concerned, his options on how we can save money as Americans is keep your tires properly inflated, keep your air conditioning to seventy eight degrees. Oh, please! 30. You know what? Again, you, you sound like a conservative AM talk show, and you sound like the Sean Hannity show or something. And Sean's a dear friend of mine, but I got to tell you something. You know, I, I deal in the real world, and you know as well as I do that what you're saying is completely specious. Barack Obama did not say the way to save money is keeping your tires inflated. He did say that that's a good idea, among many other things. He said. Well, then he should be on a Flex Your Power commercial. How about that? Well, but, fine. But again, you know, uh, uh, the fact is that, it, I, and by the way, I'm not a political person and I don't do a political talk show, but I'm telling you, John McCain said he's going to continue the great work of George Bush. That's what he wants to do. And if you think this country's in great shape with a 6.1% unemployment rate and the worst uh, foreclosure rate in 20 years and uh, the worst consumer confidence rating in decades, if you think it's all going great, then vote for John McCain, live it up. All right, Tom. Well, you know what? I just wanted to have a good discussion with you, and uh, thank you very much for taking my call. 
Absolutely. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Like us. Like us. 1-800-5-800-866. Tom. 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 The program works. Just never, never get married. Don't have kids. Oh, it's awful. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Like is here, wide open telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM, that is our telephone number, anything goes here. Let's say hello here to Chris on the Tom Like is show. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing okay? Hey, I gotta say, I've been to your show about twice so far, love, love the show, man. Thank you. Um, the reason I was calling you was, um, I need your advice of, about my old lady. Uh, I've been with her for about, uh, about going on four years now. Um, did you say four years? Did you say four years? Yeah. And you're 27. Yes, sir. So you started when you were 23. Yep. All right. So you had a girlfriend when you were 23. Strike one. Go ahead. I uh, I met her when I was in the military. Um, she's 35 now. With uh, she has four kids. 35 and four kids. Strike two. Strike three. What are you doing? Uh, she's a, she, when I met her, she was a great woman. And so I, I just no, 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 no. But she was still a single mother with four kids. True. I mean, why do you need that baggage? Plus, she's eight years older than you. Uh, I, I, I prefer older women. Um, I, she, she, I met her. She seemed like a great woman. I don't mind you preferring older women to have sex with, but why would you have a relationship with somebody who, when you're thirty-two, they're going to be forty? Uh. <laughs> I mean, it's, she just caught my eye, and uh, I was just, I just fell in love with her as soon as I met her. Okay. All right. Um, for the past four years now, we've been uh, going uh, going together, and we moved in together right away. Uh, she was with me when I went to Iraq, and ever since I got back from Iraq, uh, she's been for a different woman. Uh, we're always fighting now. Um, she on, on the internet and talks to all these guys on her MySpace and everything. Well, there you so, go. But see, when, right. when, I, when I do it, she, she raises hell about it. And no doubt you knuckle under. And I, I, just, I just... Right? What's that? When she tells you to stop, you knuckle under, correct? Yeah, right. Right. So, you're a complete pussy. You're great at defending our country. Thank you for that. But like a lot of guys who defend our country, uh, you know, you're an animal when you're out there in the battlefield and then a complete pussy at home. Uh, I don't see myself as a pussy. I just... I, I, Why, I when when she tells you... If she's chatting online with other people and then tells you you can't do it and you stop, you're a pussy. Why don't you say no? Well, I haven't stopped. Uh, yeah, I, you I, said I, that you, I, I said friends. you knuckle under and you agreed. Well, I, I, I stopped recently because I wanted to save my relationship. <laughs> but but she's not stopping. True. She doesn't care. I, just, I don't know. She doesn't care about your relationship, does she? She says she does. I don't care what she says. She's on MySpace chatting with guys. True. What's her MySpace page look like? Um, it's got a bunch of NASCAR stuff on there, and it's got her and her kids' pictures on there. And, and then, uh, how does she look in the photos? Um, on the on the picture she has on her MySpace, it's just kind of a sexy picture. Oh, uh, sexy pictures! And and let me ask you this: How many friends does it, does it say she has? Uh, I believe it's like thirty. And what percentage of those are guys? Um, I'd say about, oh, about 50%. At least. Right. Right. So there's 15 guys on there looking at her sexy picture and chatting with her, and you tolerate it. Well, she just says they're just friends. That's... I know what she says. You well, know not... that's not true, and so do I. Right. Can a girl have friends? I should just go ahead and break it off with her and just say I'm through. I wouldn't talk. Uh, my rules are, yeah, uh, by the way, you're paying her bills, too, I see. Yeah. Does she live in your house? 
Yes. <laughs> she, she used to she used to work, and then she quit work to go back to school. So Which you paid for. Which you paid for. Say it. Actually, I'm not paying for it. Actually, actually she, um, she got some some kind of grant. Uh huh. But uh, obviously, is she paying rent to live in your house? No, nah, she don't pay nothing. I, 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 when I got in the military, I work in the oil field now, so I make pretty good money. That and doesn't I, mean I, anything. That, that, that means you owe her money for her four children. By the way, how many fathers with those four children? One. One. Was she married to him? Yeah. And why should you be paying the cost of her kids? Uh, they live with her and they live with me. And the no, they, they're her responsibility. Uh, hers and the responsibility of their father, not you. Robert, the father don't do nothing. He don't. He, That's he not your problem. That's not years. your problem. Not your problem. I'm yelling at you with love, Chris. <laughs> yeah, this is not your problem. Okay. It's not your problem. Uh, this is just not yours. Not your job to pay the rent. It's not your job to, to pay the utilities, to buy the groceries, to get back to school items for the kids. That's not your problem. All right. She should not be living in your house. Well, I don't want to just boot her out and she has no place to go. <laughs> give her give her some time and tell her here's the date. Okay. Let me ask you another question, Chris. When you have sex with her, right. do you use a condom? No. Why not? Um, I know she's, she's fixed. Uh, we, we've had sex numerous times, so I, I know she ain't going to get framed. How do you know she's fixed? Did you see it? Did, were you there for the surgery? No. No. So you have no idea. All right. All right. Well, I, I assume that since we've had sex for the past four years, she ain't got pregnant yet. That... You just, you've just been very lucky. Okay. So I should just go ahead and just tell her, hey, here's the date. Get you a job. Find a way to pay your own bills. By the way, do you own your house? I'm renting it. When's the lease up? Uh, uh, about two years. Two years? It Why'd you it's sign it's such a long lease? Uh, it took it to grant, by the way. And uh, I told him, hey, I want it for five years. And... Ugh. I don't know what the laws are in Dallas. Uh, so before you kick her out, if I were you, I'd consult an attorney. And I would consult an attorney if I were you. Okay. Seriously. Okay. I'm not kidding. I, I, I'll take your advice. I guarantee you she's been with one of those guys on MySpace. I guarantee it. I, I wouldn't doubt it because when I was in Iraq and I talked to her one day, a dude answered the phone and I asked who he was and... He said, oh, I'm just a friend, but he spent two nights there, but she said he's on the couch. Chris, come on. What, does he have a home, this guy? Yeah, he was, he was in the military, too. <laughs> Bet he was. Chris, you know, I, I, I yell at you not because I, 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 I want to embarrass you or make you feel bad. I yell at you because I know in the military they're going to yell at you to get you in the line. And that's apparently what works when you're uh, training. And I'm trying to tell you, you need to get the same ass kicking about the way you handle your personal affairs. All right. Because you're, you're, you're being a stooge right now. Okay. And I, you know, I have said this, and I'll say it again. Uh, I, I care so much about the guys who are in the military. And, and I hear these stories over and over. I am amazed that the UCMJ does not cover the girlfriends and wives of men serving our country. What, what she did to you should be considered treason. It should be public, punished by hanging. Because there you are trying to serve your country, and you have to be distracted by this woman who has some other man staying at your house. You should be concentrating on helping us fight the war. You should not be concentrating on whether your girlfriend has a guy staying at her house. It should be treason and should be punished as such. End it. Okay. 
And do it with an attorney so you do it right. Okay. Then, I'll, then I'll, when I get off work, I'll go home and tell her to she's pack her stuff and find somewhere else to go. Uh, and again, I would recommend an attorney just to make sure you're doing it right. Okay. Okay? All right, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah, give me a call back. Let me know how it works out. I will, Tom. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. Oh, my God, those those calls kill me. They kill me. Guy is serving our country, and this woman has got her MySpace friends coming and staying over at his house while he's out of the country, defending the country. It's outrageous. Kenneth on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, what's up, my friend? <laughs> Not much, Kenneth. Hey, love the show. Thank oh, you. I love the show. Did you happen to catch Obama on the O'Reilly fact? I, I T-voted. I haven't seen it yet. I watched part of it, and, of course, Bill O'Reilly took his whole I want to attack Obama on the war issue, and he forced Obama to say that the surge worked. And I thought about it. If I have a million plans, if 999,000 of them are wrong, one of them will be one of them has to be right out of a million. And then he forced Obama to say, "Oh, the earth, the, you know, the surge worked. It worked." And Obama was pretty much just like, "Yeah, by luck." I loved it. I love the show. I think McCain's a complete idiot. I loved it. I, I liked his speech last night on the show, on at the convention. It was great, except I thought he was lying. A lion is a pretty bad thing, and I'm amazed how many Americans willing to put up with the lion. Amazes me. Kenneth, we're out of time for this hour. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.